വെൽക്കം ടു എ ടി സി എം ദ എമർജൻസി മെഡിസിൻ ചാനൽ സോഷ്യാലിസ്റ്റ് എ തേർട്ടി എയ്റ്റ് ഇയർ ഓൾഡ് ഫീമെയിൽ പ്രസൻറ്റ് ടു ദ ഇ ആർ വിത്ത് കംപ്ലൈൻസ് ഓഫ് ഇച്ചിങ് ഓൾ ഓവർ ദ ബോഡി വിത്തിൻ ഹാഫ് അവർ ഓഫ് ഡ്രഗ് ഇൻജെക്ഷൻ ഓൺ ഓഫ് ഇനിഷ്യൽ ടെൻ സെക്കൻഡ് അസസ്മെൻറ്റ് പേഷ്യൻറ്റ് വാസ് കോൺഷ്യസ് ഓറിയൻറ്റഡ് ഒബെയിങ് കമാൻഡ്സ് ആൻഡ് ഏബിൾ ടു കംപ്ലീറ്റ് വൺ ഫുൾ സെൻറ്റൻസ് കമ്മിങ് ടു പ്രൈമറി സർവേ എയർവേ നോ ഹോൾസ്നെസ് നോ ചേഞ്ച് ഇൻ വോയിസ് നോ സ്ട്രൈഡർ നോ പൂളിംഗ് ഓഫ് സെക്രീഷൻസ് ബൈലാറ്ററൽ വീസ് വാസ് പ്രസൻറ്റ് coming to breathing respiratory rate of 28 per minute saturation of 94 percentage in room air all peripheral pulses equally palpable coming to circulation heart rate of 95 beats per minute bp of 100 bar 60 mm of mercury two large bore iv cannulas were inserted during this point of time coming to disability gcs was 15 by 15 coming to exposure 97.8 degree fahrenheit and sugar was 160 mg per deciliter at this point of time we were suspecting the patient uh, a 38 year old female with an acute onset breathing difficulty immediately fo- following drug induction what was the drug that was being given to her uh, diclofenac diclofenac so again okay. it's very clear diclofenac is very common to cause uh, this sort of presentation so what will you categorize See, uh, when the patient comes to the er no you wanted to say that whether it is anaphylaxis or whether it is just an articarial and allergic reaction it anaphylaxis is a severe form of uh, allergic reaction whether it's a plain articaria or whether it is an anaphylaxis where will you place this patient any acute or onset illness with uh, articarial itching associated with if there is any compromise in airway okay. breathing or circulation will point so we can it. call it as an anaphylaxis some patients they will just come with some insect bite minor reaction to that area so that we can just call it as a local reaction only maybe the local articarial lesion only and maybe we doesn't need to go ahead with all the drugs that has been recommended for anaphylaxis maybe a local applicants with some other antihistamines will be sufficient enough in that situation but here anaphylaxis when you call it as anaphylaxis there is definitely an airway compromise or a hemodynamic compromise whichever it is evident they might come up with a syncope so that uh, they might not say that uh, uh, they don't have any history so we will not be able to get to any of these things so whenever you are getting an unexplained clinical presentation to the er where you are not able to say a definitive diagnosis always keep anaphylaxis as one of your differential diagnosis when it is a sudden onset so that is one thing they can because I, that's what patient that come they will come with syncope and they go into airway compromise they will not be able to give you any history there might not be any bystanders available so that is one part you need to keep in your mind here the patient has got bilateral wheeze as you suggested so bilateral wheeze definitely there is an airway breathing compromise so we have to straight away go ahead and give whatever is needed as per the anaphylaxis management so that part is clear and next important thing management of airway what will be the initial clinical signs that you might say that okay this patient is probably going into an airway compromise which all will be the clinical signs or features by which you can say that okay this patient is going for an impending airway compromise can you uh, so any change in voice change in voice very important that will be the first sign that you will be able to see the patient voice will be changing so if you know some of your colleagues or uh, suddenly have come up with some episodes you can just feel that their voice have changed so change in voice the next thing strider strider will be little bit uh, more uh, they will feel some irritation in the throat they will start complaining of some chest tightness and all those things and later on as you say it they will go into a strider whenever there is a vocal cord edema so till that time when the strider sets in then it's a difficult question but usually they will just come with profuse sweating and also some discomfort change in voice very evident but change in voice you have to take it as an airway compromise and early administration of adrenaline is warranted in that situation so next thing as i suggested they can come with sudden syncope and collapse because they have gone directly into an hemodynamic compromise and they have a syncope and a collapse so that is some atypical presentation not classical of anaphylaxis and next they can come with some gi upset so that is another thing you think that it is an acute gastroenteritis so acute gastroenteritis whether it's a viral what or it is you need at least 4 to 6 hours minimum to act soon after consuming a food most likely reason it can be an anaphylaxis so they will come with diarrhea sudden loose stools after consuming so you need to keep that anaphylaxis as one of your differential diagnosis at that point of time so now the management part you can discuss what we have done for this patient you can say uh, in this patient we were suspecting that is anaphylaxis following drug intake so at this point of time we have given injection adrenaline 
1 milligram 1 is to 1000 dilution iv stat over the anterior lateral aspect of the mid thigh you have said you are given us you are telling it as you are given it as iv and you are telling that anterior lateral aspect of the thigh also i am i am stat see what is the recommended dose is 0.5 mg 0.5 mg of 1 in 1000 dilution you can give it as an im in the anterior lateral aspect of the thigh so that is the adult dose that is required and if the patient is in hypotension or it is refractory to initial im adrenaline the symptoms persist even after couple of doses you have given the first dose of adrenaline and after 5 minutes you can repeat one more dose of adrenaline still the symptom persist you need to prepare IV, IV adrenaline. So IV adrenaline, how will you prepare? You need to dilute, dilute. It, it further. So one ml, you have to put it in hundred ml NS, NS. Uh, and you can in order uh, NS is the best one. You can uh, put it in hundred ml NS, and you need to infuse at a rate of 0.5 to one ml per kg per hour. So that is the infusion rate. Depending upon the response, either it can be a hemodynamic response, the blood pressure was low, the blood pressure is increasing. or the patient symptoms you can further taper down the dose of uh, adrenaline so what is the first thing that you need to remember give adrenaline first dose give adrenaline second dose after 5 minutes if the symptom persists meanwhile you prepare for iv preparation of adrenaline and you start as an infusion at a rate of 0.5 to 1 ml per kg per hour 1 ml of adrenaline ampule you can dilute into 100 ml ns and then you can give it as an infusion so that is the one recommendation so that is regarding your adrenaline so suppose the blood pressure is not improving you need to think of starting a second line agent like noradrenaline so that is the next option that you need to keep in your mind so the blood pressure is not improving you have to give noradrenaline or also you can even try with your fluid boluses initially itself the hypotension is there the standard fluid boluses with uh, whatever available either ringer lactate or normal line 20 to 30 ml per kg you can give fluid bolus and see how the blood pressure is improving if not improving then you can start on uh, second uh, uh, vasopressor agent that is noradrenaline meanwhile you need to take care of the a and b so what all is happening if there is an severe airway compromise you need to sometime go in for a surgical airway or if there is no compromise of the airway that has happened you can try initially with adrenaline nebulization and also simultaneously you can start with ipratropium bromide and salbutamol nebulization since this patient has got wheeze you can start on salbutamol as well as ipratropium nebulization so that is the next line agent that you need to keep in mind and always always remember that when you are planning for an intubation do it early as possible so as it delays further local cord edema sets in i will give you a scenario the patient had a strider okay to a presentation now the patient doesn't have got strider whether it's a good sign or a bad sign uh, it's a bad sign complete, why complete so total occlusion when a partial occlusion strider was there so now there is a complete occlusion there is no airway at all patency is not at all maintained so that is not a good sign so sometime we need to go ahead and immediately do a needle crick ventilation uh, jet ventilation or maybe an elective tracheostomy immediately in not elective emergency tracheostomy needed to be done so that is a very crucial thing we have to do it at immediately so uh, jet ventilation is one thing or cricotherotomy is one thing that we can easily do in an emergency situation where you can put a small size ct tube and you can start continuing bag mass ventilation with that so uh, we had a, a couple of years back we had a similar patient who had uh, in the restaurant and uh, he was having some food he had got seafood allergy but he has ordered for fish so he thought there was no seafood in that uh, fish curry and he consumed that and he came in with a pretty bad anaphylaxis he was on the verge of an cardiac arrest he presented with severe strider and uh, unconsciousness so we just went ahead with a needle jet ventilation just uh, give him supplemental oxygen and after first or two shots of adrenaline he improved and he recovered so that is the importance of airway management so till you give your adrenaline ready and airway compromise can happen so you have to be very very clear in what to be done in your airway management that part has to be very clear so what i told you have a b c what all things we need to do a we need to give your adrenaline nebulization we can always start your next thing will be your Uh, salbutamol and ipratropium bromide you can give as a nebulization and adrenaline im im not improving IM. prepare for iv as an infusion blood pressure not improving iv fluids followed by your next line of agent 
If the patient is on beta blocker toxicity, you have to think of giving glucagon. glucagon. If the patient is already on beta blocker, blood pressure is not improving, you have to keep that in mind and you have to give glucagon. So that is in a nutshell regarding your anaphylaxis management. So what has been done for this patient? Initially, the first dose of adrenal 0.5 ml IM stat over the thigh was given. Okay. Then we reassess after 5 minutes. Still, there was persisting symptoms and this was still persist. At this time, we have given another shot of injection adrenaline 0.5 ml on the uh, Andrelite Andrelite aspect and we wait. Then slightly the patient's symptoms have got improved and vitals everything was settling in and this was also come uh, uh, started to disappear. Okay. So then you can think of giving other agents which uh, like uh, chlorophenol maliate you can give of uh, maybe a steroid because these drugs will take time for act. So that is why they are not being recommended as anaphylaxis drug of choices that is adrenaline. You want to have an immediate action. When you give steroid it will take 2 to 3 hours to act. It is not going to act right now. So it is taking a longer time. That's why steroid has not been put in any of the major guidelines. But still you can give steroids and your chlorophenol maliate. What is the most important thing that you need to look into here? She need to avoid taking NSAIDs. So any anaphylaxis, the primary aim is to stop the offending agent. So we have to stop uh, prescribing diclofenac to her and maybe other NSAIDs also she will be allergic. So that is one instruction. Can you tell me one scenario where we will give anti snake so where we will give uh, a drug as well as uh, this thing, uh, adrenaline in the same line? That is only snake bite. Even if ASV anaphylaxis occurs, we cannot stop. Uh, temporarily, we can stop ASV, but later on, we need to continue giving anti snake venom. So, that is one set of the classical teaching in anaphylaxis is that you have to stop okay. the offending agent, but you cannot stop the offending agent here in snake bite. So, ASV need to be continued. So, what we do is we stop ASV for temporarily, we treat the anaphylaxis, then you restart with an if you have started like 1 ml per minute then you can start with 0.5 ml per minute slowly you need to restart your anti snake venom so that is in uh, then if the patient has uh, got similar picture that is hereditary angioedema it can come like uh, your anaphylaxis but the treatment is totally different they will not respond to these drugs so what is the treatment for hereditary angioedema uh, hereditary angioedema is an autosomal dominant uh, c1 SRS deficiency disorder uh, most commonly, uh, different classifications are there. Most common is hereditary one, that is angioedema without arctic area. Uh, the treatment are like we can give fresh frozen plasma, cryoprecipitate. Uh, latest modality we can give like C1SRIs inhibitors. Uh, deficiency can be corrected Correct. by uh, calicrate and uh, other bradykine antagonists. Antagonists are available these days. So, when you really suspect a hereditary angioedema, not much of uh, arctic area lesion. There is no history of any exposure. Suddenly the patient is coming with multiple episodes of uh, anaphylaxis. Last time she had come, now also she is coming. Then you need to keep in mind whether it is a hereditary angioedema that we are going to deal with. Anything else that you want to tell? Okay. Fine. Thank you.